theoretical compared to what we did in 376, um, where you're actually working with data. But um, if you think about everything you did in 206 and 376, we relied maybe less so in 376, but we relied on the fact that we had a distribution that we knew something about. Usually it's a normal distribution, so you're pulling things from that. And yesterday, Colonel Clark in a seminar said, if I know the distribution, if I know the mean and the variance, and I know that it's a normal distribution, I know everything about, about that distribution. And so um, in these next few sections, what they're about, they're about calculating a distribution from something where you don't know the distribution for the random variables you're given, but you know it's somehow related to another variable where you do know the distribution for that. And so that's what all of these problems are, and they're, they're methods oriented, so they're just, uh, you know, Jedi math style, just turn the crank type thing. All right, so what's the difference, by the way, between calculating the sample mean um, and what we call the population mean? Three, six, six. Right, it's a theoretical thing, right? Um, the sample mean is a function of the sample that you have. So we had we developed a little app in the in 376, so you could actually see if I if I started flipping a coin, kind of a pseudo random numbers flipping a coin in it that one you have ones and zeros. The sample mean was not a half with a small sample, but as you increase the sample, it turned out that this increased sample started to you could see the distribution laying out, and it turned out to look exactly the way it's supposed to look towards the, as you went to infinity. And so um, there's relationships between the sample mean and the population mean. But um, the question always is whether we can. Um, so the population mean is a theoretical thing. You've been learning about it in here as a theoretical thing. It is the expected value of y. It's a function of the random variable. That's what it is. The sample mean is a function of the sample. So it changes as a function of the sample, which is why I made that app so people could see when I started increasing the sample, the sample mean was changing. Um, and you want to know usually how good the sample mean is compared to the population mean. But what if you don't know these things? You don't even know your distribution to to, to, you know, to even answer these questions. I recommend you read page 297 because they give you the motivation behind this and you'll need some motivation because sometimes when you're turning the crank, it's a little boring. So the goal is to find that probability distribution of a function of a random variable, a function. So they tell you there's another random variable, you know something about that, you have a new random variable that's a function of the previous one. So I'm going to show you the first method um, which is section 6.3, and it's called the method of distribution function. And the calculations can get a little messy, so bear with me, because I'm going to go through a bit of boring. Um, but it, you have to kind of see it. Um, and these are examples from the book, but I just tore them out because I think they're, they illustrate it really well. So you're given, this is the information you're given. You're given a PDF for a random variable. So this is the PDF they give you. You're also given... Another, that another variable, random variable, is a function of the previous random variable. So those two things have to be given. So in your homework, sometimes they don't explicitly tell you what the original random variable, the properties of it, they'll say something like uh, uniformly distributed. So you know the distribution of the first random variable. So they won't always give you this explicitly. And you kind of remember that from homework three where sometimes you weren't given this function. So that, that might happen on one of them. I'm actually gonna have you look at your homework in a second after we go through this so you can see like, hey, they didn't tell me this, but I know what this is. <coughs> the problem is to find the PDF for the new random variable. So that's how all the problems are set up. And I think all the problems on the home, or a large amount of the homework for is like this. Okay, with me? All right, so I'm just gonna go through the steps, okay? Um, the first step like, is to reformulate um, the fu in terms of the y. So by definition, f, this is supposed to be a capital U. Who's the person in here that all their letters kind of look the same? Is that you, Tyler? <laughs> my, my, my capital U, my little u's look the same, so I apologize for that, but this is the formal definition of a distribution function from your book. So you take that u and you 
replace it with its what you the relationship is with the original random variable. So transform that to y's. And then change that to a problem in y. Why would you do this? Because you know information about this random variable. You know the PDF for this random variable. So you take the other random variable, which is related to this one, and transform it back to um, the, it's a change of variables, that's what you're doing. Transforming it back to the capital Y. Right, good? So I, I recopied the last thing so that it doesn't disappear. So the second step is to find the boundaries uh, of the piecewise definition in terms of little u. So this is actually called the support. And if you're in real analysis, you talk about compact sets. Those are compact supports. So it's the region where the PDF is not zero. Um, that's called the support. And typically, we need that set to be compact for all the theorems to work, which I know you know about. At least you've been tested on. Closed and bounded as far as you care. Um, so where did these come from? I, I tossed up the original PDF up there. You see how the original support, so that's the place where it's not zero, was zero to one. So um, I look at the new boundary. If you ever change limits of integration from substitution, if that's the way your teacher taught you, that's what we're doing. We're looking at where those limits are changing. So the bottom endpoint was zero, so you have the little green arrows on them, so they're matched up. Um, and I solve there in terms of u. So the new lower bound in terms of u is minus one. And then I move to the upper bound. The upper bound of support was one, y equals one. So I set this to be less or equal to y equals 1. And then I solve for u, and I get that u has to be smaller or equal to 2. So that gives me my chunk where I have not uh, support. That's the, called the support of the, the new function in terms of u. Good. Then you compute the distribution in terms of t u, not y. So it's kind of like u substitution from Calc 2, which I always seem to make fun of. But here we go. Um, this is the definition by the raw definition in terms of y from the beginning. Um, and I write that definition down the way you would when you were back <coughs> in the second grade version of this class. Right At the beginning, you'd always write that definition down. And then the support would be. Um, from zero to u plus, that's where, that's where the, we have non-zero support. We don't go all the way from minus infinity. It starts at zero. And then it ends up being here, but only on the interval u equals, um, I forgot the original interview, interval was minus one to two or something like that. Shouldn't it be, we should negative one be your lower bound? No, because we're doing this in terms of y. So we pop that thing right into the y equation. If you look at it in terms of the capital Y, that's right. So you have to work with that one because that's where you have the information. So the new bound, the bounds that you found for you. It's coming. They're going to show up. So keep them in mind. I forgot them all from the previous slide, but keep them in mind. We're going to have it in a, in a second. It's going to show up. Here it is. So the support where u falls into the support of the PDF for y is when u is between minus 1 to 2. That's why you needed those bounds. So the part that has support is this um, between u equals minus 1 to 2. Um, underneath it, it's minus 1. Over it, it's 2. I mean, it's 1. Sorry, over u equals 2 is 1. How do I know that? How do I know that this, these two have to be in place? I know this one, because I did it by integration, but how do I know those top two? Yeah, how do I know that it has to be zero at, when it's less than minus one, and it has to be one when it's greater than two? Because as of y, we're going to validate that two plus two. 
That's correct. Um, F of U has to be, to be a valid density function, it has to satisfy those criteria. And the criteria are that as it goes to minus infinity, it must be zero. If it goes to positive infinity, it has to be one. And um, this is the area that it has, or the piece that has the support underneath it. Okay. So th they gave you easy peasy one. This is the easiest one they gave you at the beginning, just to just to get you warm up. It can get it gets messy. Yeah, this thing? Yeah. So notice I put my little disclaimer up here for u between minus one and two. This is true. And you just you just throw it in. This the u plus one over three is what we just get from y equals. Yes. That's it. That's a bad part of not using a board. Sometimes I copy and paste it in here, but I forget. And so, so that y that u is u plus one is plus three, and then the zero, the lower ground, does that come from the original? PDF? That comes from the original PDF. This okay. is the definition, right? Um, you only look at the place where this is in terms of capital Y. Right. That's why you start from zero, right? But this, I've got a disclaimer up here. This is as long as u is between minus one to two. I already worked that in. We're not done. You, this is the distribution function. The relationship between the distribution function and the PDF is you have to take the derivative. So you take the piecewise derivative. Good? And I'm not sure if she's given, it's Colonel Watts again. So um, she did the homework for this one. And so I'm not sure if she gave you a, um, a softball like this one. <laughs> 